Hey guys, Chad here for Kayak Bass Fishing and welcome back to another video. Today I'm back on the community tab answering one of your questions. Today's question comes from Creek Fishing Adventures. All right, so let's jump into answering Creek Fishing Adventures question. So he asked the question, what do fish do differently in cold water? Eating and living habits. Now, that's a great question, and that's actually the appropriate way to approach figuring out how to catch fish in the wintertime. Where do they live? What do they do? Those are the kind of questions you should be asking yourself all year long, but I think what happens is the wintertime is the hardest for most folks to figure out. Now, again, the wintertime means a whole lot different things for different people in different areas. If you're in a place where there's hard water, the fish are gonna act differently. If you're in a place where there's moving water and it's cold, they're gonna act differently. If there is inflow of colder water from coming, you know, from somewhere else into a particular body of water, fish are gonna act different. So rather than getting into the specifics because that video would be too, you know, complex and too complicated to pull off in the amount of time that we have here, but I will be doing a series on that. You have to find the deepest, stillest water, in my opinion, with relative proximity to shallower water for the fish to feed should the opportunity present itself. Here's what I mean by that. If you've got 30 foot of water at the dam and the dam rolls all winter long and there's no places and current breaks for those fish to get out of, they're not gonna be in that water. But if off to the side, there's a cove and that rushing water goes by and the water circles backwards and creates kind of a, an eddy and then on the backside of that, all that water steel and it's only 15 foot deep there, then those fish will probably be in that 15 foot of water. Now, if the only place on the entire reservoir, uh, the entire lake and the entire system is 10 foot deep and it's enough water to keep them, to, to let them winter over so that they don't freeze to death, that's where they're gonna be. So you have to figure out where you're fishing and don't just look for the deepest water. I see people do that all the time. They look at Navionics, they look at a map, they go find the deepest water. Okay, I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna DTS it. I'm gonna go deep to shallow, okay? I'm a big fan of STD, you know, shallow to deep. You always catch something with an STD, um, but that doesn't work as well in the wintertime uh, because for the most part, those fish are going to be orienting a little bit deeper. Uh, there are places in the south that I can go 12 months out of the year and catch fish in six foot of water. Uh, nine times out of 10, it's because it's a big staging flat. It's near the main river channel or the creek. And as long as it doesn't get so cold that it forces them off into the creek channel or forces them off into you know, that deeper water, they'll stay in that six foot of water and they'll huddle up really tight to cover. So the one habit, the one thing that they do a little bit differently in the wintertime, which is the same thing they do for the most part in the dog days of summer, unless you get a thermocline and the water gets low oxygen and then they have to pull up, for the most time they're gonna stay really, 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 really tight to cover. They're not gonna move as far. Imagine somebody sitting on the couch with a Snuggie on, and I hate to personify fish, but I'm gonna make this analogy. Imagine somebody sitting on the couch with a Snuggie on, they're gonna be on that same place sitting up under the air conditioning in the wintertime. So if you imagine an old grandma in the south, she's probably got a Snuggie on in the wintertime. Oh, my hands are so cold. Uh, and then in the summertime, she's sitting there fanning herself, got the AC on high, drinking a big old sweating glass of sweet tea. Those fish do the same thing. So find that deepest, stillest water. Now, for eating habits, they're gonna eat the thing that's gonna give them the most return on investment for the least amount of expenditure of energy. So there's a couple of lures and a couple of things that we've talked about in the past that you're gonna fish for fish when they are active, okay? For the most part in the winter, I believe that the fish are more um, in tune with the feeding times, meaning they're more active during the feeding times and they're less active arbitrarily and they're less opportunistic, meaning even if it's off peak for the feeding time and they gotta swim two foot to get something they probably won't. You put it right in their face and you let it sit there, then most likely you can talk them into eating it. So I wanna show you a lure real quick that, uh, that I've been using quite a bit I actually have never talked about this thing on camera. Uh, I, honestly, I'm a big fan of the companies that I'm partnered with. And I'm a big fan of the benefit of those relationships because for years and years and years and years and years and years and years, I said, I would never use a product that I didn't pay for. And I still hold true to that philosophy when it comes to starting a sponsorship. But after I've had a relationship with a company like Yamamoto that I've had for going on 15 years, 
um, they come out with products and I may not have fished it or I may even have seen it on the website and thought, ah, oh, that's not much different than what I've already got, so I'm not gonna order it. But this lure is one such lure that they sent me in one of my lure orders for the TV show, and I threw it in the bag and said, oh, that looks interesting. I don't know if it's really worth all the extra hoopla because I've already got a flapping hog, um, but I threw it in my bag. And on a, on a winter fishing trip, I tied this thing on and it's one of those baits that is super versatile. And now that I've started to use it, I can't believe that I didn't use it before. And it's this thing called a mermaid, okay? We're not gonna talk about color here, but what I really like about this one is it's got some blue and pearl and green. It looks a lot like a molten crawfish. It looks a lot like a shad. If you swim it, it's got some big appendages that move water, and then it's got some really thin appendages that kind of move around and undulate without a whole lot of uh, uh, effort, but I also like this little appendage holder right here where you can break it off so you can increase or decrease the action. But let me show you how I rig this thing. You can Texas rig it. You can tie it on as a jig trailer. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with it, but I'm a big fan, a very big fan of this. We talked about this in a couple of other videos. When do I use a Texas rig versus when do I peg it, you know, versus blah, blah, blah. And so this is an, you know, this is me expanding on that. So uh, Mustad makes these ultra point stand up jig heads. And so in October, uh, I got some of these uh, on an order where I ordered all the specials through Lucky Tackle Box. Now, the, the great thing about this is I probably wouldn't have fished these before. I took these things and I started playing around with them. And all they are is just a stand-up jig head from, from Mustad. And there's a couple of ways you can fish this thing. It's got a little hook on the back so you can thread a bait onto it. And it's got the keeper on the front. I like to break this little hook keeper off of the back if I'm not if I'm using the screw lock. So I'm gonna show you how I fish this dude right here and then uh, show you why I fish it that way. So all you gotta do is screw it on there. What's great about this thing is this jig head is versatile. It's not a football jig head. It's not a structure head. It's a stand-up head. So it's kind of in the middle. So it's real universal. You can throw this thing out there. You can swim it. You can hop and pop it. You can also let it sit on the bottom. And that's why when paired with this mermaid, it's a great combination. Take that hook bend it back, stick it through the body, make it protrude out the top side. And then when you throw this thing, and I like to bend the wire to line it up so that you got a nice profile. You throw that thing out, it stands up because it's a stand up jig head, okay? What's cool about these appendages right here is they move with the, I mean, look, I'm just gonna hold it out there and just see how much movement it gets just from the movement in my arm from me talking. Now, Add in the fact that a bass may be swimming up to that and it's sitting there breathing, it's moving its pec fins, it's creating these little vortices in the water. And what'll happen is even when you're dead sticking this thing, that water hits these arms and it just makes this whole thing come to life. If you take one of these things right here and you pick them off and you loosen that arm up, it makes even more action. And that thing moves around like crazy, okay? So it just opens that action up. Now, these things in the summertime buzzed on the top weightless which is one of the real things i love about yamamoto plastics is they've got enough weight to them that if you want to do a like if i want a subtle frog bite or if i'm on a frog bite where they're just rolling on and they're not blowing it up you can take this thing and rig it just with a hook throw it out and slow reel it on the top undo those little appendages and it just makes a slow buzz on the top if they blow up and miss it that's the other great thing about yamamoto plastics it's got enough weight if you just drop your rod tip it just thing just kind of falls and moves and these little arms right here kind of flutter and these put off a bigger thump these put off a smaller vibration and man the comeback hit on these things is nasty it's actually become one of my throwback baits that I just have hanging off the front of the boat. So if they miss a top water, I can snatch this and throw it back in there. But buzzed on the top, hopped and popped, it's deadly. But <laughs> for winter, this has become one of those dead stick presentations that is just a go-to. You take this thing, you throw it out there, you let it sit on the bottom. You don't gotta do anything. In fact, you know, it's one of those lures that if you've got a rod holder, you can just kind of throw that rod holder off to the side, angle it up, take up the slack, and as you're just moving your boat around, it kind of creates a little bit of a scoot, and you can dead stick fish it and just let it sit in the rod holder, and it'll catch fish. Throw a little cox juice on this thing, because I do believe in, in the wintertime that every little thing, every little advantage that you can add in your favor is gonna help you. Um, I soak these things in coffee grounds. That's another thing. Coffee seems to be a really good attractant. It's not something that alarms them, uh, but that dude right there, the Yamamoto Mermaid, 
I like it in this uh, shad blue pearl color. Uh, I like it in black and blue. Uh, just is just stupid, deadly effective. Um, I've talked about this in the past. I'm going to talk about this one more time. But again, the feeding habits are they're not going to move far. They're going to be tight to cover. You're going to need to throw that lure out there. Use what, that technique that I talked about in a couple of other videos, the finger drag. Move it with your finger on the line, not with the rod and not with the reel. Get that rod in place and then drag, drag, stop. And then when you drag and you let go, you're putting that swoop back in the line so that you've got that ability when that fish hits it, it doesn't feel you before you feel it. You see your line move, reel down, cross its eyes, uh, fish on. So just to expand on this about something that I've already talked to you guys about, these Zakos are phenomenal. So you can also take this bait and you can break this wire screw lock off just like that. And then you can rig this Zako directly onto here. You can throw this thing out on the bottom and the hook grabs it really nice, that little keeper right there. Slide it up on there. Again, take some wire clippers, um, bend it back and forth until it breaks off or just cut that thing off and you could fish that exposed hook just like that. That tail floats up, it moves around, it creates a lot of action and that thing right there, sun will flat catch them in cold water. So that's one option. You can also put the Zayco on there and rig it weedless. Uh, actually, let me show you that. If I'm gonna put the Zayco on the screw lock, I'm gonna screw it on here like this. And instead of actually running it through the body, and these are things you have to think about when you're rigging pretty much any bait, okay? The, the, the thickness of this body is thicker than the hook. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to use it with this if you're gonna rig it that way. So what I like to do when I'm using the Zayco is go through the body sideways. So you just come in like this, go through the side. You still got plenty of space in there. The hook's sticking out the top, line that wire keeper up, barely skin it. And then when that fish grabs it, it's hooked. Just like that. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for this video. Thanks for the question. I appreciate the inter interaction more than you can know. If you haven't done so yet, consider becoming a KBF member. A lot of benefits associated with it. They're all outlined on our webpage, and the link to that is in the description box. So give this video a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications so you get a notification each and every time I release a new video and each time I post a new question, promotion, or giveaway on the community tab.